Thanks for joining me today. Let's talk about how to write an email asking to do a speech. Now, writing the right email is like a golden ticket if you know how to do it. It's very rare for somebody to be really good at this. And I've gotten pretty good through the years, so I'm excited to teach you about this. I've been speaking professionally for over 20 years, landing gigs and events, and helping my friends and lots of people do it. So I'm excited to share this with you. So there really is an art to writing a good email, especially something that's compelling, personalized, customized, all of those magical words that make it so that somebody will actually click and read and not just throw it away. But let's talk first about why so many emails fail. And from experience, I can say that actually a majority of emails that you send cold are not going to be opened at all. So you can't be too frustrated. Obviously the headline or the main subject needs to be catchy, something that's interesting. We'll talk about that in a minute as to what that looks like but the body of the email needs to be something so compelling and so interesting that you capture them in the first minute. But some of the common mistakes that people use is there's a lack of clarity, a lack of personalization. It might just be a little bit confusing what you're talking about or you're rushing too much in with too much content right away. So having a nice soft way of talking to somebody in an email is a real great art form. So let's talk about how we can do that. There are four P's of a powerful email. Number one is personalization. So personalize your email that might be a tricky thing if you don't know the person but there are so many tools nowadays you can figure out a lot about a person even if you just go to their LinkedIn profile and look at their life a little bit or Facebook or Instagram I like to do that before I send an email and just make it personalized I might say something like hey I see that you're from this state and I have done this or that I you know something like that would be a great way to start in an email and just to let somebody know that hey I understand who you are and I appreciate what you're about or you could talk about their industry and just be like, hey, I see that you're an educator. I would love to talk to your students and teachers about XYZ. And so just acknowledging through personalization that you already know who they are a little bit helps them to think, oh, I, I should read a little bit further rather than form letter. Have you ever gotten that email? <laughs> it says like, Dear fill in the blank, <laughs> that's the worst. I'm gonna delete that email. So personalize, at least put their name. The second P would be purpose. Clearly state your purpose as to why you're sending that email. So for example, at this point you could say, I am a keynote speaker that's delivering an entertaining and educational experience that your people are going to love. Just some sentence so simple like that, that gives them the purpose as to why you're talking to them. That's a powerful thing to be able to say clearly. And then the third P is persuasion. So to persuade somebody is an interesting technique, but we all have to do it. And so maybe that's through name dropping or having done other events that you know they were involved with or having done social media proof where you screenshot something or share a testimonial from somebody. That can be included within the body of the email and the persuasive piece really can get someone compelled if you know your personalization and your purpose didn't compel them that much. Now you can persuade them through something that they go, wow, I, I guess we need to listen to this person. The fourth P is the toughest one of them all, it's precision. I'll tell you, more emails are ruined by so much great content that no one can get through it. So don't write an email that's so crazy long that they're like, I need to go get lunch and take the entire day off to finish this email. You need to have something that's precise, that is succinct and gets to the point quickly. That's really the power of a great email. Those are extremely hard to write. And so as you practice this technique, all these that I've given you, I hope that that will be helpful for you. What I'd love for you to do is put in the comments if something I have said has been helpful, but also put in the comments something that maybe I've missed because we're going to talk about a few more things here in just a moment that you can now apply the actual words but I want to see where you're at right now and guess what every comment I get I'm going to reply to it so that's a good way for us to engage let's keep rolling let's talk about the structure of a winning email you ready for it this one's pretty darn interesting because when it comes first to the subject line that's a big deal here's some examples that I really like transform your event with Jason Hewlett that's a nice interesting catchy line or looking for a speaker, let's make your event unforgettable. Now, to you that might not sound like that great or that interesting, but think about all the emails you get, think about how much copy matters and the headlines make a difference. Maybe some of the best places you can do is go and check out a news station or news article online and say, which of these headlines grabbed me enough to click? And that will help you to start to see how you can write better headlines. Then you write your introduction. Dear so-and-so, don't say so-and-so, write their name. And then you 
you could put, I recently came across, and then you could put their event and say, this fascinated me because I would love to be involved. So you could talk about that you have researched their event and that you want to be a part of it. That's a big win for that person reading that email. Next in the body of the email, you can then specify a bit more about who you are, what you do. I'm a Hall of Fame keynote speaker, award-winning entertainer, and I would love to come in and entertain your people by educating them about what I call the promise. The promise is doing what you're going to do after you said you're going to do it. Oh, there's an easy way to say it. It just depends on how you write it, but practice it. Send it to your assistant, send them out, see what they think. It's always an interesting experience to create the body of the email. And then the CTA, the call to action. Everybody talks about a CTA is so important. Of course it is, but you can't just say, here's what I offer and then no call to action. You have to say, let me know when a good time is that we can talk or to even be better specific, let me know if Tuesday or Thursday you're open of this week. Those are the best dates for me because I'll be speaking the other days on the road. <laughs> now here's some additional tips that I've just added in the last couple of months as I've started to work on this process of writing better emails that open doors for my business. I started using ChatGPT and maybe you're a seasoned pro at ChatGPT by now, but for me, I was very concerned about adding that into my world because I thought, I don't want to sound like a robot. I don't want to sound like someone else wrote it. Here's what's fascinating about ChatGPT. Garbage in, garbage out. So whatever you enter into it, it will help create something that sounds very much like you. In fact, it very well may sound better than anything you could have ever written. And so when I entered it in recently, some very cool things came out. I wanna read exactly what I typed in, because that's the most important part. If you type something in and it's not good, it will spit something out that's not good. Are you ready? I'm gonna read this for you. This is what I asked in ChatGPT. Write a sales email for me to pitch my services as keynote speaker at an event planner I have never met and has never heard of me. Encourage them to have me as a speaker for their next large conference and the benefits of getting on a call to discuss hiring me and the benefits of having me speak will have on their event. As I've started to send that email more and more, I'm noticing people are actually responding because what ChatGPT laid out for me was almost a quintessential email that I just had to go in and edit a little bit. I added in a couple of little spicy details, things that ChatGPT wouldn't have known. And so I'd encourage you to start integrating into that because guess what? If you don't start using ChatGPT in your efforts of writing, copywriting, sales, all the things that the world does and reads, well, you're gonna be left behind. So make sure that you start it implementing that. The saddest thing I've noticed about a great email being sent is that we don't follow up. Follow up is the most important part after you've sent a great email. So many people send a great email and then they don't even think about it again. I would ask you to promise yourself to follow up because when you follow up with that person, whether it's another email a few days or a week or two later, or maybe you wanna make a video for them. Maybe you wanna reach out on LinkedIn or Facebook a different way to see how you can connect with them if they didn't reply to your email. Promise me you'll follow up. Let's talk about providing value. Recently, a friend of mine sent my name along to his former client. Now, that's absolutely the best kind of email you can have sent. It's not from me. It's from my friend who's referring me. Oh, thank you for that. His name is Brad Montgomery. If you go check out bradmontgomery.com, the sweetest, amazing, hilarious speaker you can find. Here's why I say sweetest, because of the way he speaks. He's so genuine. Here's what he did. He actually made a video, one minute video, that's all. And he had a little sign he was holding up that had on it written the name of the client he was talking to. So the client did not think it was a form or normal video that he just used generically. It was custom made because it had her name written on the sign and it said, hi Susie. <laughs> and he was like this sitting there like that before you click on it, then he started talking to her. That is so brilliant. There are different ideas and ways in which you can create great emails. The very best way though, is to align yourself with other speakers. The speakers that have done the events that you want to do, the friends of yours, and you help them, they help you. When I don't have a way to do an event, I'll refer another speaker. That's like a golden email. So we've talked about how you can create great emails, there's also a way to create great relationships so you can have emails sent on your behalf. I hope today has been helpful. I hope also you go check out icmprocess.com so that you can identify, clarify, and magnify your signature moves and the best ways in which you can deliver something unique to every audience and every email you send. Thanks.